committee will come to order. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess of the committee at any time. As a reminder, I ask all members participating remotely to keep themselves muted when they are not being recognized. We will conclude today's hearing at 12.15 p.m. Members who were unable to ask questions at our September 30th hearing with Secretary Yellen and Chair Powell will be given priority to ask their questions today, and we will return to our normal order of recognition once these members have asked their questions. This hearing is entitled Oversight of the Treasury Department's and Federal Reserve's Pandemic Response. I now recognize myself for four minutes to give an opening statement. Welcome back, Secretary Yellen and Chair Powell. As this pandemic continues, the Biden administration and congressional Democrats remain hard at work to provide protections and essential relief to individuals, families, and small businesses across the country. The emergence of the new Omicron variant shows us that this crisis is not over and we must remain vigilant to protect our country and our families from the devastation of COVID-19. Since Democrats have been in power, we have delivered for the American public. Democrats provided rental relief for struggling renters, provided 70,000 vouchers to address homelessness, provided support to state and local governments, and helped our nation's restaurants. Democrats helped businesses reopen, prioritize vaccine distrib distribution, and because of this work, 74.5% of individuals five years and older have received at least one shot. In fact, this Thanksgiving was the first time since the pandemic began that many of us spent time in person with our friends and families. Under President Biden's leadership, the economy has created 5.6 million jobs, more than any other administration's first nine months, and weekly jobless claims recently fell to 199,000, the lowest total in more than 50 years. But our work does not stop at pandemic relief. We also enacted landmark bipartisan infrastructure legislation, an achievement that has eluded Republican and Democratic presidents alike for decades. Under President Biden, we now have the funding in place and the programs to finally rebuild and refit our nation's bridges, roads, and railways, and bring broadband to millions. And soon, the Build Back Better Act will make long overdue investments in the nation's affordable housing infrastructure, child care, and education workforce. I hope that our Senate colleagues move quickly to send this bill to the president's desk. While these investments will be critical, the Fed's unfinished objectives of full employment and price stability serve as a reminder that we must not leave anyone behind during this recovery. Chair Powell has identified supply chain bottlenecks and ongoing caregiving needs as two of the major barriers to continued economic recovery. Congressional Democrats have responded by passing bills that invest in child care and help clear those bottlenecks. It is crucial that the Fed hold off on declaring a premature victory on this economic recovery until the communities that have been hit the hardest, people of color, renters who fell behind on their rent, and women who have done the bulk of the caregiving have a chance to experience the recovery. If we're truly to build back better, we must ensure that people of color are represented in the Fed's leadership. We must make sure that people's caregiving needs are met so that they can pursue new opportunities in education, clean energy, and more. We must address the root causes of rising prices by investing in housing and supply chain resilience. Secretary Yellen, Chair Powell, I look forward to discussing your ongoing work 
to respond uh, to the pandemic. 